What up? Austin with AG Auto Works here, working on a doozy. This vehicle has been here for a few months now. I diagnosed it a while back, tried to diagnose it, couldn't get anywhere on it. It ended up being something that took up a lot more time than I expected, a lot more than I quoted for. And I didn't want to give up on it, so I left it here for a slow time. Well, it's a slow time, so I brought it back in. 2013 Dodge Dart. Now, I've messed with this quite a bit. It's not reading the crank sensor, is what it's doing. It's not reading the crank sensor. It's getting an intermittent, um, intermittent reading from the crank sensor. Now, I'll attach a video of what it's doing. I believe I still got it. Now, the green line I have connected to the crank sensor. Now you'll only see a little line coming down showing when it when it's reading. There's just one line and it goes all this way before another line. And then it has another one right beside it. Another one here. Two more really quick. It's very sporadic. It's not consistent. Two and one of them doesn't go down all the way. Now, since... Since I found that reading, I have replaced the cam sensor. I verified that it had five volts going to it, a good ground going to it. The signal was very intermittent. It would read, it wouldn't read. Sometimes you could smell fuel and it would start to fire. Most of the time it wouldn't. So I changed the cam sensor, thought maybe I got a faulty cam sensor, got another one, all from the dealer. Same difference, didn't make a difference at all. And then I found there was a nick on the crank pulley. The crank pulley has the reluctor wheel that the crank sensor rides off of. I changed that. Didn't make a difference. I have redone all of the harness. So by redoing it, what I mean is I repinned all the connectors. So I repinned the connectors down here. I ended up breaking a terminal. So I replaced it with a new connector. That is to the crank sensor. So I got a new connector there, and I came up here to the PCM connectors, and I pulled every one of the wires out of them connectors that go to this circuit. I looked up the wiring diagram. I pulled out the terminals for the 5-volt supply, the signal wire, and to the ground. I repinned everything, made sure that it held on the little connectors on the, well, the little pins on the PCM, made sure everything fit tight and reinstalled. Still, same reading. And in the theory of operations, it shows that the crank sensor, if it does not work, it will still fire off of the cam. Well, this one's not. And I continued to mess with the crank sensor because I knew there was a problem there. I knew that I found something that was wrong. After I have repinned everything, I have no idea what I can do to fix that crank sensor issue. To me, the PCM is good because it's getting a ground. It's supplying the five volts it's supposed to. It doesn't make any sense to me why we're not getting the signal out of it that we should. I've even tried adjusting the crank sensor and everything closer to the reluctor wheel. No difference. So. Just for shits and giggles, I ended up checking for ignition and fuel just to see if it is getting it. Now, what I did was I found the control wire on the ignition coils and the injectors. Now, the way that you find the control wires on these, you got to get to at least two connectors. So on the ignition coils, two, two coils is what you need to get to. Look at the wires here. We got red and blue, we got a black and purple, and we got a red and whatever that is, green. Okay, now look at this one. We got a red and blue, we got a black and purple, those two are the same. Now the control wire is gonna be the one that's different. This one's yellow with a red stripe. This one was red with a green stripe. So that's my control for cylinder one. So I probed into that to get my reading, and I did the same thing on the injectors. Again, you look for the wire that's different, and that'll be your control wire. 
So I've done that. I have also put an amp clamp on the negative battery cable. And what that's going to do is that's going to give me relative compression check. And I pulled out the spark plug on cylinder four. Now, the reason I did this is because I already checked the ignition coil and it was getting ignition. Okay. I already checked that with the fuel injector and we were getting both. Electronically, the computer is putting fuel in and giving it spark. With it giving both of those, now you got to think. So we're getting fuel, we're getting spark, and the computer seems to be doing what it should be doing. What's left? There's the engine. It's the only thing that's left. So let's check the engine. How do you do that? That's why I put the amp clamp on the negative battery cable and pulled the spark plug out. I'm going to check relative compression overlaying when it ignites the ignition coil, ignition coil and when it is telling that injector to fire, when it is telling that injector to put fuel in cylinder one. And judging off of that, we'll see if the engine is doing things when it should, if it's in time, if you will. I can't do a cam crank correlation test because the crank sensor isn't reading. So without me tearing this engine apart and looking at timing marks and seeing what's wrong with it inside, this is a test I can do to see if it's doing things in a time that it should. Well, I've already done it and I got the wavelength here. Here we go. Now it's a lot to look at at once. The yellow is the uh, relative compression check. You see three humps. You see this flat. That flat is cylinder four where I took the spark plug out. Otherwise, it would be another one, the same. A big flat. So that's when cylinder four is. Now, these lines, the colors of these lines match the wires that I use to connect to the engine. So the blue goes to the ignition cool. The red goes to the injector. All right. So you already know the yellow is the compression of the engine. The red is the injector. The blue is the ignition cool. Well, you can already tell that the ignition cool is firing on cylinder four, not cylinder one. Now, you want to know which one of these is cylinder one. You got to look at the firing order. I already have it pulled up here. There's the firing order. Front of the engine, forward. So, forward. It's going to be like this. The spark plug that I pulled out is cylinder four. Cylinder four. Now the firing order is one, three, four, two. So let's look at the firing order here. We got four, two, one, three, four, two. So the injector is firing on cylinder one but the ignition is firing on cylinder four. And I'm testing on cylinder one, ignition cool and injector. So this is why it's not starting, but why is this happening? To be honest, I hadn't figured it out yet. I've been brainstorming over this for quite some time today and I haven't figured it out yet. It's possible that the reluctor wheel that the cam sensor reads off of has became loose or something has has rotated on the cam to where now it's reading off. The ignition should happen definitely on cylinder one, not on cylinder four. And to me, it's a four cylinder engine. We got cylinder one ignition firing two cylinders off. <coughs> Sorry. So when it's two cylinders off of a four cylinder, that's 180 out. It's not very likely that a timing belt or timing chain would jump exactly 180 out. Keep compression in the cylinders. That just doesn't happen. So it's got me picking my brain a little bit.